So you have your ear lobe, you have the external auditory canal, and you have the ear drum. Okay. So um, then you have what we call the middle ear, and the middle ear is composed of three, the, the tiniest bones of your body. Um, I, I'm self-centered, so remember my name, Isaiah. Well, that's the order of the uh, of the bones. You have the malleus. So I think I misspelled that. You have the incus, and you have the stapes or the stapes, right? And that's the order in which the bones progress throughout the middle ear. So you have the bone, the malleus, that's hooked up to your eardrum, your tympanic membrane. Then you have the incus that also connects it like this. And then you have the stapes that kind of looks like a little stable like that. These are known as your ossicles. Okay, I'll describe what happens as sound waves enter the ear and all that is good. And you have the eustachian tube. And then you have the inner ear. Now look, the inner ear is a little bit different and you guys have to know a couple of things. You have these things that look like semicircular canals, don't they? They look like semicircles, right? Because they're called the semicircular canals. Then you have this part that looks like the shell of a snail out here like this, okay? And then you have a connecting portion it's called a vestibule. So let me explain. This right here, you're known as a semi-circular canal. This right here is known as a cochlea. And this part right here is known as the vestibule. Okay? This is the ear. You have the outer ear that starts at the oracle, the pina, the earlobe. It ends at the tympanic membrane. That's the eardrum. As the sound waves comes in, the grooves in your ears, folks, help funnel the sound waves inside the ear, and then they bang on the eardrum, they create vibrations. Those vibrations actually move throughout the ossicles, and they vibrate with one another, and they make their way towards the inner ear, okay? The stapes attaches itself to a little area known as the uh, semi, the oval window, not, not that important. But all within these chambers, these ones right here, and even in, within these little tubules right here, you have a lot of fluid. And all that fluid inside the inner ear is responsible for your balance, your equilibrium, your proprioception, which is like if you close your eyes and you put your arm up, your brain knows that my arm is up or that your body's down. It does so because of that fluid and the nerves that are connected to the proprioceptors all throughout your skin. So as they stretch and all that stuff, they communicate with the inner ear and your brain figures out, oh, my arm is up right now, my arm is down, or I'm, in, I'm upside down, whatever the case may be. Does that make sense, guys? You guys have to know that the outer and middle ear, they conduct sound waves. Okay, they, it's responsible for conduction of sound waves. So, what I mean by conduction is that it transports the sound waves. If you have excessive amount of cerumen, meaning earwax, you have a conductive hearing issue because they cannot conduct the sound waves to the inside. Does that make sense? Same thing with you have if you have issues with the middle ear. If you have issues with your ossicles, sometimes you can develop like spongy bone calcification within the articulations of each of those bones, they're not gonna vibrate well. That's a conductive issue or an issue of conduction. Does that make sense? All that stuff can be fixed relatively easy. You also have this thing right here called the eustachian tube, which is um, connected to your pharynx, to your throat. And this is why kids from the age of three months to 36 months, if they're bottle fed, they have a high risk of developing otitis media, middle ear infections, because they sleep with the bottle in their mouth, the, the bottle of milk drips milk to the back of the throat, it lands right here, and you guys know that that milk is full of starches and carbs and sugars, and so it attracts bacteria, now you have an infection, and 
anytime the kid talks, moves their jaw, or moves their ear, a lot of pain. Does that make sense? Okay, that's the eustachian tube. Now the inner ear is very important because I discussed the semicircular canals, the vestibule, the cochlea. And then you have this branching off of these nerves. All the fluid that's inside of those chambers, you have also other components like you have the bony or the membranous labyrinth. Labyrinth is an enclosed space, right? You have um, endolymph, you have perilymph, you have all this fluid, and you have a bunch of little hair follicles. Well, they look like little hairs, but they're nerve fibers. And as the fluid is essentially baiting all of those nerve fibers, it communicates with the vestibular cochlear nerve, and that sends its signal to the temporal lobe, and that's how you guys are able to hear what I'm hearing. You guys get what I'm saying? I know it's a lot, but I want you guys to focus on this. Whenever you have a conductive issue, meaning that means that the issue is that the sound waves are not getting in, that is a, that's a problem of the outer or the middle ear. And that's pretty, uh, we just have to find out where's the issue. Do you have a lot of earwax? Do you have issues with the ossicles? What's the issue? But whenever you have an issue of the inner ear, since the fluid is also responsible for telling us our balance. Have you guys ever been pulled over by cops and they think that you're drunk? What do they have you do? The sobriety test, right? It's called the Romberg's test. I forgot how to spell it, so I'm not gonna do it right now. But my point is that they have you stand stationary, do all this, can you touch your toes, can you stand up? Because all of that is assessing your inner ear's ability to conduct all those impulses. And if you're drinking alcohol, what does CNS do to the uh, brain? It depresses it, so you're gonna have issues with them. Does that make sense, guys? So, whenever you have an issue in the inner ear, your main symptom is gonna be vertigo. Not to be confused with dizziness, even though I know they're used in our, interchangeably. But vertigo is that sensation that you feel when you drank too much the night before and you get home at night and you lay down and you feel like the whole room is spinning. You guys experienced that before? That's vertigo, that the room is spinning. That's because there's something wrong with the fluid inside the inner ear. Does that make sense, guys? So when we talk about this condition of Meniere's disease, I think of it as many ears, and many, we have a lot of fluid, that's this condition. You have Meniere's disease, you have an excessive amount of fluid being produced in the inner ear, and there's different ways of relieving that. You can actually put little tubes that drain the fluid out, but most commonly, we give a diuretic that's gonna get rid of the fluid that's reserved for the cephalic region. What's that diuretic called? We discussed it a little while ago. Manitol, yeah, we give manitol. Okay, because that medication res, uh, excretes the fluid that's reserved for the cephalic region, including the ear. Does that make sense, guys? Okay. Sometimes, uh, if this doesn't get fixed, they snip the nerve that's responsible for sensory conduction. So you won't be able to hear, but at least you won't have that issue of vertigo for the rest of your life. Does that make sense? And the same concept applies. If you have excessive fluid being retained by the body, what do you do with the sodium in the diet? You decrease it, okay? It's just basic concept, basic, basic concepts of that fashion. Does that make sense, guys? That's Meniere's disease. So we can use that now to address the question. A nurse is reinforcing teaching with a client who has a new diagnosis of Meniere's disease. Which of the following instructions should the nurse include in the teaching? Is it avoid bearing down, increase caffeine intake, Avoid sudden movements. Increase sodium intake. Avoid sudden movements. And that's because you understand that the main issue this patient's gonna have is issues with vertigo, with their balance. Thank you.